look exhausted with this lighting. Uh, yeah, we got it. We got it. I am so, so incredibly excited. Finally got my 100K play button and I wanted to do a little bit of an unboxing for all of you. Also, ho, what is going on everybody? My name's Jacob Forster. We had 100,000 subscribers and it's seriously insane to me, incredible, absolutely humbled by everything and it's time to open this thing up. Um, also, we've got uh, an Ask Me Anything. I decided to do a little question and answer AMA from my Discord channel and here from YouTube. So I'll go ahead and do that after the unboxing, but let's get a uh, let's get a real reaction of this. I got, I got this in the mail like, what, almost a week ago and I've been waiting to actually unbox it so I could record this video. So I haven't seen it, it's still sealed. Let's open it up, see what's going on in here and I'm gonna be absolutely amazed, I'm sure. But let me get this tape all off of here. We'll open this together. Oh gosh, I already broke the box. <laughs> it's all falling apart. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I don't know what's gonna be inside other than the plaque, but get this little guy. And we have a little note, a little note from YouTube. Couple little notes. So the main one says, do you remember your first subscriber? Your hundredth or your 1,000th subscriber? Chances are you do, and we know that you'll definitely remember your 100,000th subscriber. Your fans may have found you while searching YouTube, learned about you through a friend, or maybe you showed up as a recommended video. No matter how they came to your channel, your audience stayed, and their numbers increased because of you and the community you built. We're so proud to honor your impressive milestone of reaching 100,000 subscribers with the Silver Creator Award. Congratulations. We know that you have many more stories to share with the community, and we know your fans can't wait for you to amaze them even more with your commitment and creativity. So keep creating, keep building. We can't wait to see what you'll do next. And we're here to support you along the way. Who knows, when you reach your million subscriber, we may just write to you and ask, do you remember your 100,000th subscriber? Yours sincerely, Neil, the head of YouTube. I have no idea who that is. But here we go. This is it. This is the play button. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I gotta take it out of the box. Cause this is, oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. All right, I gotta take it out of the plastic too. There's a lot of things going on here. Ah, ah, it's so cool. Look at, look at this thing. This thing's massive. I'm gonna hang this up behind me in my normal suit. This is my living room, by the way. Hello, you're here now. Um, this is so cool. I love this. I love this so much. <laughs> Thank you everybody for helping me get to this milestone and get to this point in my YouTube journey. It's been, Absolutely insane, absolutely incredible. And honestly, I couldn't be here without all of you. So uh, just again, a sincere, sincere thank you for this. I'll put you back here for right now. All right, I recorded that entire, that entire first part. I turned off my AC because I thought it would be loud, but it got so, so hot. I just started getting sweaty. So I'm back. A little play button is over here and I am here ready to answer all of your questions. Uh, I got, I think almost 50 different people that were asking questions or at least leaving comments. And I wanna to try to answer as many of them as possible uh, in no particular order, but I guess I'll start with the uh, Discord first since those were kind of the first people that started asking the questions. Um, so just kind of going through these, I'll start with uh, Nova asked, if you were any kitchen tool, utensil or object, which one would you be and why? Congrats on 100K. Thank you, Nova. Uh, if I were any kitchen tool, utensil, or object, uh, I mean, I guess I would just be a, <laughs> I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe I would just be a chef's knife because it's versatile. It can be used for pretty much anything in the kitchen and it's a fun, cool tool to use. So I guess that would be why. <laughs> But uh, on to the next question. We've got Ken uh, is asking, if you were not a YouTuber, what would you like to be? That is also a great question. Um, and I feel like this is one that I, I see repeated a lot. It's like, if you weren't doing YouTube, what else could you possibly be doing? And uh, I, I always love performing and I love to entertain. 
So if it wasn't on YouTube, it'd probably be something uh, similar. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I have a musical background. I love music and I love uh, performing. And, I, and I, I'd say that's probably what I would be doing else, like outside of YouTube. If none of this existed, probably doing something music related, which, which that'd be super, super fun, super cool. So thank you for the question. Next up, we've got Kids 2. Is it hard uploading daily? Like, do you sometimes get tired of it or you don't feel like recording? What is the biggest challenge as a streamer YouTuber? Question mark. On a scale of one to 10, how good is Hawaiian bread? <laughs> Hawaiian bread's great. It's, uh, I don't know, maybe like a, a solid eight. It's fluffy, light, delicious. But to answer the, <laughs> the real part of your question, um, I would say it was much more difficult to upload daily when I first started uh, because I was working full time when I was kind of starting my YouTube journey and basically I would work my nine hour day, get home, eat real quick, record, edit, upload, go to bed and repeat, do the same thing over and over again. Uh, now that I'm only doing YouTube and this is like my full time thing, um, the daily uploads are not as much of a challenge and especially since I've gotten into the groove of creating, um, kind of have a system down for myself it doesn't take me as long to do editing because kind of I, I know my style and I know what I want to do for my edits. And I'm very fortunate to have a style where I can go through an entire recording from start to end without really having to do many edits at all. Uh, outside of like these videos, obviously. Uh, but just for like gaming and stuff like that, it's it's much easier. So it's, it's not something that I, I don't feel tired of doing. Occasionally I'd like to just kind of maybe do something else like off in the background and occasionally I'll be like, oh, maybe I could think of a bigger video or something larger to do that might take up a couple days, but um, that's more of a want as opposed to a tiredness. And uh, what's the biggest challenge as a streamer slash YouTuber? It's a many part question here. Um, probably the biggest challenge is, I don't know. I, I would say the one thing that always kind of is a constant is what to do next. <laughs> Because there's there's a lot of simplicity when it comes to doing gaming. Because for the most part, there's there's always games. There's games that are constantly coming out, being released. But even then, sometimes it's difficult to find the next game that you want to move into. So if I'm playing through like one particular game that is a long series, when I'm done with that one, sometimes it's difficult to be like, okay, well, what next? Do I just play like little indies? Do I jump into the next? like long form game, I have no idea. <laughs> and that becomes a challenge, just trying to find the direction of kind of where to go next. So thank you for the questions, Kiz2. Next up, we've got Moth a Horse. Uh, do you have advice for anyone wanting to start making entertainment oriented videos on YouTube? Congrats on 100K, my sister and I love your content. Thank you. Um, so that's a good question. The, the biggest piece of advice that I would always give anyone who wants to do any type of YouTube, any type of content creation, whatever that may be, whether it's streaming or just making videos, just start. Um, that's, that's the biggest hurdle for most people is to just make that first video, upload it, and don't worry about too much. Um, a lot of people focus on too many small details when they're trying to get into something. You may not find your voice immediately, while kind of starting these videos, you may not have the best camera quality, you may not have the best setup to do like editing and stuff, um, but realistically, most people can kind of start. If you have a phone, an iPhone, you can just kind of hold it up. You can do editing in the iPhone or in other smartphone apps and figure out a lot of stuff there. When you're recording, you can kind of get a feel of what you, like how your style is, like how you speak, how you, kind of act or perform, whatever the style is that you're going for. If you're more of just your own person, if you're going for like some crazy character or something, like doing acting, whatever it may be. But just starting is kind of the biggest aspect that I always recommend whenever people ask that. It's a great question though. Great, great question. Up next, we have Zoe. Tattoo tour soon, maybe question mark? Maybe in the future. I only have two tattoos. Uh, I saw another question. I'll jump into that one too. Um, asking about my tattoos. I have one on my thigh up here and one on my foot. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show them right now. 
<laughs> Maybe sometime in the future. <laughs> uh, Kitty Love Meows asks, what is your favorite part of being a YouTuber? Thanks for all the wonderful videos. Congrats to 100K. Woo woo. <laughs> Thank you, Kitty Love Meows. Favorite part about being a YouTuber is honestly the community. I, I love being able to like interact with you all. Um, I know it's it's not something that is like always able to happen, but seeing the comments that people leave showing just the the love that they have, the like gratitude, how much they ha like find enjoyment out of the videos, and even like finding friends through content creation. Uh, I've met some really awesome uh, people through content creation that I like hang out with quite often, and um, just being able to kind of find that community is is really awesome. Probably a follow up on that. The second below that is just having, uh, being like a full time YouTuber, having my own time. Um, I love having that kind of freedom of schedule. Uh, it's very, very, very nice to have in life. So thank you for that question. Sam <laughs> asks, describe your perfect pizza. Sam's got a lot of questions. Sam's one of my good friends. Uh, <laughs> Sam says, describe your perfect pizza. I love a good pepperoni pizza. Just, just it can be just plain pepperoni. But if you want to go a little bit special, maybe something like a pepperoni with feta cheese. Maybe throw some Kalamata olives and red onions on there. That's a great pizza. Great pizza. Uh, what upcoming games are you most excited for? <laughs> I want. I want Metroid Prime 4 so badly. It's the whole reason I bought a Nintendo Switch and there's just no news about it. And I'm so, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I really want it to come out, but there's a lot of great games coming out. Metroid Prime 4, even though we have no information about it for like four years, that's a huge one. Uh, <laughs> he crossed out, will you ever finish Tunic? Someday I will. What's your favorite way to relax? I, I found more and more that I really enjoy walking. Um, so I, I like kind of going out and walking around my neighborhood, walk, go get myself some coffee, just kind of a nice moment to just be outside, soak in some sun, uh, get to see a rogue squirrel, birds, random little critters and creatures kind of floating around. It's very fun, it's very relaxing. Uh, favorite book or book series? Gosh, that is a tough one. I'm like looking at my book bookshelf over here. Recently, I've been, <laughs> I've, I've seen all of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the anime, recently started trying to get through the manga, the manga, however you want to pronounce it, I have no idea. Um, and I've been enjoying that a lot lately. Uh, not necessarily a traditional book. I would say outside of that, I always love Lord of the Rings, great series, I'm still staring at the books over there. Um, so that, hopefully that answers that part of the question. And then the final question, oh no, two more questions from Sam. Sam, you got so many. Do you remember your first hat? I already prepared for this. Yes, I do. It's this one right here. This is one of my, well, outside of like when I was a kid, I had just random hats. This is my first hat that I like actually started wearing around everywhere. I love this one. It's a little old, it's a little worn out, but uh, this is a great little, great little hat. I always, always really enjoy this one. And then Sam's final, final question. If you could be any planet, what would you be? I would be Pluto because it used to be planet and I feel bad for it. <laughs> All right, on to the next one. We've got Melodic Renegade. What's up, Melodic? Uh, if you had the means to travel anywhere, where would you want to go? I, I really want to go to Japan. I really, really want to go to Japan. I haven't been too much outside of the US. I've been to a ton of parts in the US. Really want to go to Europe, want to go to Japan. Um, love to go visit a lot of places that are outside of the US as a whole. Um, what's one special skill you wish you had? Oh, I'm, I'm reading a lot of these for the first time right now. Um, special skill. I would love to be able to learn new languages easily. That would be a great skill to have. Be a polyglot, I think is the, is the, is the word for that. And then um, Melodic's final question. In your opinion, what is the best scent for a candle? I do actually have quite a lot of candles around my house. Um, I like more neutral scents. I don't like things that are like super offensive to my nose, like something super fruity or like too floral. 
or like too much like a <laughs> like an axe body spray. Like some of those are just too much. So I like more like natural candles. Um, I don't know how to like describe like what one specifically. So hopefully that answers the question as good as I can. Um, we have a question from Tell. Hi Jacob, congratulations. What are some of your passions? Would you ever incorporate them into the channel? Also, would you ever do a podcast again? Great question. Uh, some of my other passions, uh, again, music is a huge one. I used to really enjoy doing art. Uh, that was mostly like in high school, doing different kind of art classes and things like that that were super fun. Um, and I'd love to do, like I've thought about actually buying some, like even just like a sketch pad just to do some fun little art stuff in the background. But um, music is, is probably one of my uh, biggest ones there overall. And occasionally I do actually add it into, incorporate it into my channel here. So if you haven't seen some of the music videos that I've done, not music videos, but like videos about my music, I've got a couple here on the channel that are, are kind of fun. And would I ever do a podcast again? I mean, I've, I definitely would. I would. I just don't have any like need to do a podcast or like any extreme desire to have a podcast like immediately. So yeah, yeah. Next up, we've got the Big Cheese Master. <laughs> Great names, everybody. Great names. What's your least favorite food? Congrats on 100K. Least favorite food? <sighs> I'm a huge foodie. I'm a huge foodie. I don't know. I don't know if there's any like one particular food that I really don't enjoy because it's like, I don't think there's ever been a food that I like really was like, <laughs> Ew, gross. Um, I'll just, ah. Think about this. Let me think about this. Yeah, honestly, I, I don't know if I can fully answer this because it's, there, there's, there's really not a type of food that I've ever been like really negative on. And I think it really depends on how a food is being prepared, where it's being prepared. It's like you, you can't judge a hamburger as a whole by just going to a McDonald's. Like you're gonna have all these restaurants that make burgers in different ways. Same thing with like Mexican food. If you're getting a burrito somewhere, you can't judge it by one place that you went to in just some random state somewhere that it's not known for Mexican food and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I, I, I know that's a cop out. I know it's a cop out, but that's that's my answer. That's my answer. Next up, we've got uh, Anna D. Camp is asking seven different questions. A lot of them. I may not answer all these, but let's let's see. Do you have any tattoos? If so, show us. I answered that earlier. I have two. Uh, do I have any siblings? I have two. <laughs> would you ever move slash live anywhere else outside of California? I have two. <laughs> uh, I would love to. I, I love cities and I love being able to, like I mentioned earlier, walk. Um, New York has always been a really cool place. I think it would be awesome, but at the same time, like, I don't know how it would actually be to live there. And then uh, I really like Nashville. Lived there actually for a couple months, uh, way back in the day. Really liked that. Uh, again, just music -centr centric and very cool to be around that whole music scene, which was, which was very fun. Uh, what's your favorite and least favorite food? Already, okay, we're getting into some duplicate questions here, but that's okay. So this one's asking my favorite food. Favorite food, I love pizza. I'm always a pizza fanatic. I always love Mexican food. And I love Japanese food. Um, those are like my top three. They're always interchangeable depending on how I'm feeling for the day. Fourth question, what's your favorite? Oh no, sorry, I already answered this one. Fifth question, what's your top two favorite genres of music and favorite artist? Uh, I love folk music. I love alternative music. Within those, I would say Silver Sun Pickups are one of my favorite bands. Um, they just, their first three albums, some of my favorite albums. And then uh, Laura Marling is an incredible, like, London folk musician. Um, she does some incredible, incredible music as well. Favorite movie? Gosh. I don't have a favorite movie. <laughs> I like sci-fi movies, um, so I guess without having to choose a specific one, I'll say I enjoy sci-fi movies. Um, do I have a significant other? I do not. So thank you for the questions, Anna. 
And now we're going into YouTube questions. It is getting darker and darker as <laughs> this recording goes. So hopefully this is all fine. <laughs> uh, Sarah asks, no question here. It's not a question. Just popped in to say my family and I love your content. My husband and I love horror and enjoy those videos. Well, my daughter is a bit too young for that. She and I watch more wholesome games together. We love that you are always smiling. Today we watched a puzzle game and my daughter told me I would have rage quit by now, but he just keeps laughing and playing. Grateful for your awesome attitude and that you keep your language civil. We enjoy your voices uh, that you give your characters to. Great content, thanks. From a mom that loves to watch gaming with her whole family. <laughs> uh, it's very sweet. Well, thank you. I appreciate the kind remarks there. And uh, well, I, I will never say that I am like a, a family channel or like a, a, a family friendly channel. Like I, I'm glad that my persona is something that you find comfortable and that's it brings up a good point of uh, as as young children may be watching or somebody who's not maybe at uh, an age, it's always appropriate to have your parents kind of seeing what they're watching and checking in and uh, finding the best fit for them. Um, my language, try not to use any uh, any time whenever I'm doing it, but that's just my own kind of personal philosophy of uh, not cursing and having anything any rough language overall, just in my personal life too. Um, so just always keep that in mind. Do play games that focus on pretty heavy topics sometimes, but it seems like you're doing a great job of kind of making sure you're having the right filter between what videos are good to watch and kind of which ones are good to watch personally without. So thanks for the comments there, very sweet. Next up we've got, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name, so I'm just gonna see Icy Hot. <laughs> Uh, says, as you've gotten bigger in popularity, have you felt the push to make or even do videos slash gaming of things you aren't interested in just because fans are pushing for it? Now that is a great, great question. Um, I don't feel like I've ever been pressured or felt the pressure to check out any specific games, and especially not as I've gotten bigger. Um, I do get like r outreach for like, sponsors every once in a while being like, hey, you should check out our game. And like, I, I'm self-aware to, to, to be like, this is has no relevance to like what I'm playing or maybe it's just not the right fit at the time. Um, but in terms of like the community, I see the game recommendations that pop up every once in a while. People are like, hey, you should check out this game, check out this one. And it's something that I always keep in mind, but I never feel pressured to, to play something. I'll, I'll kind of look into games sometimes and be like, oh, that looks interesting or maybe not, um, but if there's like a extreme overwhelming response of people being like, you have to play this game, you have to check it out. Maybe I'll go take a look. Um, Cause at that point then like, yeah, I at the same time of wanting to find a, the right fit for me for playing games, it's also all about the community. It's all about uh, me connecting with you all. So if you all want to see something from me, I want to be able to kind of work with worth, work with everybody to find that right kind of melting point between the kind of two games, two sides of games, whether it's something that I want to play, something that other people want to see me play, kind of finding that middle ground. It's a great question. Next up, we've got Abby Rodification. My wife and I found out about you through TikTok. We're both huge fans of your channel. We've always wondered how you find time slash motivation to upload every day. So this seems to be a common question theme, at least on the YouTube side of things. People are asking a lot about the daily uploads. Um, how do I find the time? How do I find the motivation? Motivation, I love it. I love I love making these videos. I love creating. Um, as I mentioned before, with musical background, I love performing. And being able to kind of like, I know it's just sitting at home alone in front of a camera and doing these things, but it, it still gives that satisfaction of performance for me. So there's there really is a great joy that comes from creating and crafting videos. And it's just a very fun thing for me to do. So that's, that's really how I get the motivation for it. In terms of the time, um, right now, obviously I'm doing YouTube full time, so it's definitely a bit easier than it was in the past. But the biggest thing in that regard was I had to sacrifice. Um, so there's certain areas and aspects of life that if you wanna do something, it requires sacrifices in one area or another, because none of us have infinite time on our hands. So back then, when I was working full time and doing YouTube, I was basically just at home all the time. It was a bit rough <laughs> at times, but I made time for myself to like 
go out, interact with people. And uh, I, it came at a time that was very unique where people weren't going outside just because of the pandemic. Um, but now as that's lifted, it's been nice to actually have the time to go be social and also do work on YouTube and all these other things. Thanks for the question. Next up, we've got a question from the Jinxed Links. <laughs> hey Jacob, big fan of you, your attitude, your content. Lately I've gotten to wondering about what other sorts of games you enjoy besides horror and puzzlers. Going further, if you don't mind answering two questions at once, do you enjoy reading very much? And if you do, what sorts of things do you like to read? Uh, yeah, so kind of a three-part question. So the first one, outside of puzzles and horror games, I love I love really any type of story-driven game. And I do like multiplayer games too. Um, for those of you who aren't like checking out, I've been doing a lot of streams on Twitch, just having silly moments messing around in like Fortnite. <laughs> um, but like back in the day, I used to love playing like Halo 3 multiplayer, uh, played a lot of shooter games and uh, music games. So like Rock Band, Guitar Hero, uh, 1, 2, 3, Ro uh, Guitar Hero Metallica, all the Guitar Hero games, I love those. Rock Band, 1, 2, I think there were three Rock Bands, I can't remember. Also, it's getting darker and darker. <laughs> Sweet, come along. I should have set up a light, but I'm a dummy. Wait, would it be better if I was over here? I don't know. Over here? This seems darker. This seems better. So let me move this. <laughs> the pure chaos. Pure chaos is what's happening right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so definitely like a lot of other styles of games. Anything that just is, it can, can create and add some value, whether that's just from laughing, having a fun time hanging out with people online, or having something that is like a cinematic type of experience with games. All, all of it's great. And then uh, for the reading question, uh, you know, I kind of answered that earlier, but again, I've been reading JoJo's, and um, outside of that, I, I like uh, fiction and just interesting, like different kinds of books. I haven't read anything like serious in a while, so it's, that's why it's a little bit harder to answer that question. But on to the next, we've got Marco. What's up, Marco? Uh, what are your big inspirations to do this specific content and to keep doing it? Also, congrats, bud. I really love your videos. Thank you, Marco. Um, big inspirations to do this kind of content. I've, I've mentioned this before in a couple other like Q&A videos, but um, I was really inspired by people like Jacksepticeye, um, John Wolf, Gab, Smolders. Uh, they really kind of were people that I really enjoyed watching myself. And um, at a certain point, I really missed having like daily uploads from these people. Cause uh, I know that as people's content uh, matures over time, sometimes they don't need to do that daily upload or they wanna focus on different things. Uh, but for me, I, I really, really enjoyed daily uploads and especially from John Wolf checking out like indie horror games. I was like, I would love to like see more of this. And I was like, why don't I make kind of what the thing is that I've been missing? Um, not that they're not still doing it, but just I really like that frequency back in the day. And that's kind of what I wanted to try to bring back here for, for myself and for others. Um, going over into the next question, uh, just a speck of color. Been a fan of year, uh, been a fan for years, and gotta say, you basically immediately became my comfort YouTuber due to your attitude and overall vibe. I've always wondered what you tell past you that was just starting, or what you tell someone who's thinking of starting YouTube. Like, what were some unexpected aspects, challenges you've had to face, and how have you faced them? Also, what's been your favorite part? A lot of lot of questions on that one. Um, so, I think probably one of the biggest aspects of like finding something to tell my early self or someone else who's just starting. I don't know, I feel like I, I really kind of, I really went for it uh, when I was really starting out. I, I wish I'd started sooner. That's that's probably the biggest thing I would tell myself is be like, hey, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta jump on this early, man. Try it out, see how it goes, and I don't know, maybe it'll go somewhere, but um, yeah, I wish I, I wish I'd started sooner so that I could, be, I guess, maybe further along in this journey for myself. But at the same time, I, I started at a, a point that that worked for me and was at a good, good, good spot for me emotionally, where I was able to kind of have that enjoyment and have uh, a good 
good place in my life to, to really kind of make all these videos. Um, and then there was another part of this question. What were some unexpected aspects, challenges you faced? Have I faced them? And what's been my favorite part? Unexpected challenges. I think one of the biggest things is just a, a learning curve. So trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work, editing, editing software, all the weird bugs that come with that, doing recordings and forgetting to check to make sure my vocals are working, that the microphone's on, uh, or that it's like properly connected to the computer. There's like all these just super small pieces that you have to be considering at all times, like before you even start. And even afterwards, like you can have a file that gets corrupted and there's like weird things that can go wrong. And I've had a couple times where I've like started recording and I forgot to clean out my hard drive and my recording just like stopped in the middle of it just because it was completely full and I forgot to transfer files. I was like, oh, dang it. So that gets difficult sometimes. Um, but it's just a matter of just remembering, just remembering things and having to kind of go through and figure out like, the, the common mistakes, the easy mistakes that, that you might kind of run into. And what's been my favorite part, again, one of my favorite things about it is is just just the creating, the community, and again, the, the free time is it's very, very nice. Okay, sorry, I had to get the brightness up a little bit. It keeps getting darker. I gotta keep going, I gotta keep going, it's fine. Next up, do you ever feel a lack of motivation to do content? If so, what do you do to get out of that state? Love your vids. Keep up the good work, King. Thank you. Thank you, King. Uh, we've got good question. A very good question. I, I feel like there, there's definitely times where it's hard. It's hard to make videos. Whether it's just a, a bad day, maybe there's something going on in my personal life, um, or maybe I'm just tired. Maybe I'm just like legitimately tired. And for me, like it's it's just just it's just kind of like a hump that you just kind of have to go over sometimes. Um, and especially for me who does daily videos, I like to kind of pad out and occasionally record like maybe one or two videos in advance so that if I am having a little bit of a crappy day, um, I can just rest, get my spirits back up, uh, kind of recover, whatever it might be. Um, but even then, like maybe if I don't have an extra video recorded and I'm not having the best like time and maybe I'm not feeling super motivated, I try to do my best to kind of flip a switch between like personal life and work life. Um, kind of compartmentalizing and finding that balance. It's very similar to like, if you're working a nine to five, working Monday through Friday, like if you're having a bad day, like you still have to work. <laughs> so it, it's just a matter of kind of finding, finding that balance of knowing like when you should be working, when you shouldn't be working. And like, I never want to be able to, I never want to have to record a video where I'm not feeling well myself and put on like a fake mask or fake persona. Um, so it's, it's it, usually I find a lot of joy in making the videos and that usually makes me feel better even if I am having like a not so great day. So that's that's always a, a good positive kind of going into into recording and something that is a, a, every once in a while a slight challenge but never never too too much of it. Next up, Gold Rose Mage. Hi Jacob, huge fan of, and <laughs> I'm a huge fan and your channel not only helped me meet the love of my life Met them in chat on your live stream, but also inspired us to start our own gaming channels. So thank you. What the heck? That's incredible. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, if you could collab with one big YouTuber, what game would it be and with who? Ooh, ooh. I, I mean, I, Sean, Sean is like, he's, he's, he seems like such a cool person as a big YouTuber, uh, Jack's up to guy. Um, Either him or honestly, uh, like John Wolf is would be a really cool person to to play a game with, and I, I don't know, I don't know what game. It, it'd have to be something like silly, fun, like something like Phasmophobia would be <laughs> super fun with one of them. Just just because it's kind of silly, ridiculous, and scary. Uh, so that'd be I, I'd say that's, that'd be a good answer to that one. Next up, we've got the Alpha Morph asking. Uh, I feel like you've answered plenty of questions that I already had before. To be honest, lol. I think the only thing I'd like to ask now is how have you been enjoying you, your YouTube career slash hobby so far, Jacob? Have a good week. Thank you, Alpha Morph. Appreciate it. 
I've been really enjoying it. If, if any of you can't tell, it's it's been it's been such a joy to make these videos, to do all this content for you, and yeah, I, I honestly I love it. So thanks for the question. Uh, Willow asks, have you ever made draft videos that never made it public? If so, what were they? So curious about this. Happy 100K subs. Yeah, um, I don't think I've ever recorded a video all the way through to where it became a draft and I just didn't publish it. Um, if anything, there's been a handful, it's it's a pretty small, it's pretty small, um, but there's been a handful of games where I've started recording and I just immediately like was like, this is not the vibe. <laughs> this is not something that I wanna record. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, usually those are some of the, like the little indie games that I play. Um, there was one in particular that was just like, it was just an awkward game. Um, I, I, like a bunch of people recorded it for YouTube and like, I just didn't, uh, I, don't, I don't remember what it was called, but it's, if you've, if you've seen other YouTubers, you probably recognize it. It was like, you're driving in a car with like a giant cartoon guy who's just making weird remarks. <laughs> and I remember I started recording like five minutes into it and I was like, all right, I'm out. Uh, just wasn't my style. The humor was like way too dry and weird. Um, but there's been a few other games that were like that. And it mostly has to do with the, either the type of humor that's trying to be like presented or the type of horror. Sometimes there's just some games where I'm like, eh, eh. Just doesn't, just doesn't fit. Just doesn't fit the vibe. Um, thanks for the question, that's a good one. Robin asks, hey Jacob, congrats on 100K. You've mentioned a few times now that you have a musical background. Have you ever made your own music and would you ever be willing to showcase the kind of work you've made before? I know some a little late to ask my question, so this may not make it into the video, it did. But congrats again either way. Well, thank you, Robin. Um, and I think I saw people uh, reply into that comment as well. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've made a few videos with my music. It's very small, very small amount. Um, people have not really seen the majority of what I've actually done music wise. Uh, I would love to still create and like showcase some of my own music sometime in the future. So maybe you can look forward to that. That'd be, that'd be a fun thing. Next up, we've got Pretzel. Just wanted to say that you're a beautiful ray of sunshine. Also, have you played Tears of the Kingdom? First of all, thank you. <laughs> Second of all, yes, it's great. I love it. Uh, just playing it on my own time and enjoying it for myself. It's a fantastic game, fantastic game. Next up, Funny Froggy Alert. Great name. Uh, a lot of your videos center around horror games. What draws you to the genre? Any particular favorite games, mechanics, tropes that come to mind? Yeah, uh, I always really enjoy horror games just because it's like, it's such a reactive and it like really brings you into the to the game itself, into the world, into the environment. And I love how it just kind of pulls you in and it freaks you out. <laughs> I always remember in, I think it was uh, end of high school, beginning of college, Amnesia, the first Amnesia came out and I went over to a friend's house. We took turns on his laptop playing, trying to play through it. And we were both just terrified, just sitting there in his living room, playing Amnesia on this laptop. And I always remember that being such a cool experience and uh, the pure terror that we had at the time trying to play through that game. But I always, I always really liked the way that uh, horror games really kind of pull on you, the player, as it finds those things that like creep you out or give you goosebumps and just trying to find interesting and unique ways to make you as the player not want to push forward. So I always really enjoy that about horror games. It's just really cool. Just really cool how it works. Uh, next up, we've got the best Celeste. Hey Jacob, found your videos not too long ago and became obsessed. Would love to know, uh, get to know more about you. Do you have a day job or other things you do on the side when you're not recording? There's a few questions here. Uh, have you played story games like The Last of Us? What types of shows do you like watching? I'm obsessed with Shameless right now. Happy belated, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't have a day job outside of this. Uh, I was about, about a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago, I, I quit my job uh, to kind of focus on YouTube full time. Um, and outside of that, obviously I, I do other things in the background. Go hang out, go walk around, try to play some music here and there. Uh, have I played story games? Absolutely. Tons of story games on the channel, including The Last of Us Part 1 and 2. Go check it out. There's uh, Just search that on the channel. You'll be able to find it. Uh, but yeah, tons and tons of story games. Um, so there's lots of stuff within that. 
What types of shows do I like watching? Uh, one of my favorite shows is Lost. I love the show Lost. Uh, been a while since I've watched a lot of shows, but shows I've like remembered, like long series Lost, watched Mad Men. Uh, recently I actually watched Breaking Bad while I was sick and not feeling well. I just watched that on Netflix. Um, yeah, good shows, fun shows. And yeah, let's move on to the next question here from Mary Louise. It's very admirable that you constantly post daily videos that are usually an hour long. How do you cope with such a busy schedule? Do you have someone to help you and do you enjoy daily uploads? So what first part of that I've already answered. Second part, uh, I'm fully solo, independent. Don't have anyone else that works with me. Uh, I don't have management. I don't have anything else. So I'm fully indie YouTuber do all of my videoing, editing, uploading, tags, metadata. I'm my own hype man, I'm my advertiser. I <laughs> I'm, I'm, I do everything. Um, so that's, hopefully that answers that question. Um, how do I cope with such a busy schedule? Uh, I Having done it for a while, there's a certain amount of organization that comes with that and kind of getting an order to the madness, figuring out what to do and when to do it, how long to focus on one thing or another and getting through it. So it's just experience, I guess, is the biggest thing. Um, and now that I'm doing this as a full-time gig, it's it's obviously much more manageable at this, at this stage. And then uh, do I do enjoy the daily uploads? I do, I do very much enjoy them. So thanks for asking. Next up, we've got Wheat Bread. <laughs> so many great names here. Uh, hi, Jacob. I found your channel through your The Longing Gameplay. I've been watching your videos ever since. Love to know which is the most memorable moment for you in a game and why. Ooh, that's a that's a really good one. I would say, first of all, thank you so much for watching for so long. The Longing was such a fun, such a fun game to play through. Honestly, that one that one itself is is a great moment. Uh, and behind the camera here, actually, right over there, I have a little uh, setup with a cassette with the, the music from the longing. I've got a little longing plush, a little figurine, and a bunch of other cool things from that game. Absolutely wonderful. It was such a, such a heartwarming game and such a unique game as well. I, I think that's the thing that I really like about games like, like The Longing, uh, why I, I kind of am drawn towards more story-driven games, just because it's like such a unique experience, and that's something that I really enjoyed. Next up, Fighting Max says, did you ever get burnout from making videos, especially if you got more popular? If so, how did you overcome it? No, I, I wouldn't say I've ever hit a stage of quote unquote burnout. Um, if I ever did, like, I, I know I would have the, the 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 clarity of mind to just be like, hey guys, like I'm gonna upload one less video a week or two less videos a week, or be like, hey, I'm gonna take a few days off and just kind of enjoy life for a minute. I think what I see a lot of people in this industry and kind of around me, what happens is they just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And even if they are feeling a pushback in their own heart, their head, whatever it is, physically even, um, they just keep going because they're like, there's just a lot of focus on in content creation is just what's the next biggest thing and how can I keep growing? How can I keep improving? And I, I like to kind of sit back in myself and look at things as a whole and be like, okay, well, this, this is a good moment to focus on maybe this side of what I'm doing or maybe this side. X, Y, Z, whatever it might be, uh, instead of having to constantly push one idea or one notion for my channel. Um, hopefully I don't get to a point of burnout, but uh, again, it's something that I'm constantly addressing in my own life to hopefully not get to that point. So thanks for the question. Next up, Tori asks, can't wait. Question I've been meaning to ask for a while is whether or not you plan on having new merch. So I think lots of people would be interested. I'm not sure about what all is involved in that though. Yeah, no, I, I, I've been I've been wanting to do new merch for a while. I, I've been slacking. <laughs> I've been seriously slacking. Keep an eye out. Uh, right now, if you wanna check out merch, I believe there's a link in the description on all the videos of a represent.com store. Um, but I, I do wanna make some more merch, especially for the 100K. It'd be fun to have like a, a special like limited edition thing that I can make. Um, I'd love to do hats. 
but the, the represent store, they don't do hats for people my size. I guess they do for other larger creators, but um, I don't know. I, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to design first and foremost, and if I want to stay with represent, they're great so far, but if I wanted to do stuff like hats, obviously I would need to go with a different store, storefront. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out, keep an eye out. <laughs> Next up, we've got uh, Mel, Melgo. Mel, I'm just gonna say Mel. What was your inspiration to start making YouTube videos? I'd love to hear why you started and if your reasoning has changed over time as your channel has grown. Yeah, so uh, again, a lot of allusions to this already, but, uh, and I've mentioned this in another Q&A before, but it's just a kind of quick reminder or quick retelling of the story. Always loved performing. I was playing music for a very long time, but playing, playing music for maybe 10, 12 years now. And I uh, got to a point where I just wanted to do more with it. And I actually started streaming initially on Twitch, playing music and uh, performing, doing all that. And uh, occasionally I'd play like a game or two. Cause I, again, I always loved watching uh, gaming YouTubers like Jacksepticeye, Markiplier, PewDiePie back in the day. Um, and so there was just kind of this, this mix of me doing music and then also playing games every once in a while. And then I just kind of got to a point where it was difficult to continue a streaming schedule on Twitch just because I was working retail and my hours were inconsistent. So then I decided to, uh, at a later point in time, I, I kind of put that off to the side, all of that. And then I was like, you know what? I, I really want to go for this again and I'll do it on YouTube instead and just start uploading YouTube videos. So I started doing that and now we're here, which is super, super awesome. <laughs> Next up, we've got Derby, D-R-B-Y, uh, 163, says, how long do you plan to post daily? Do you think you'll feel burnt out soon? Do you plan on getting an editor, assuming you don't already have one? Do you take game suggestions and do you have a Discord server? Yes, Discord server is in the link in the description. Go check it out. If you guys aren't part of the Discord, it's a fun place. Uh, I do not have an editor. I do not foresee wanting or needing one anytime soon, um, unless I'm doing like super in-depth stuff, like a Mr. Beast level. <laughs> I don't need it. Uh, I, don't, I, don't need, uh, I don't need an editor for what I do currently. I enjoy editing my videos. It's, a, it's another fun aspect of, of creating that I personally enjoy. I know a lot of people don't, but I do enjoy that part. Um, and then the first question, going back to it, how long do I plan on posting daily? Um, to, and hopefully I don't get burnt out soon. I, I, you know, that's a question I, I think about that. I think about that sometimes and again, I kind of mentioned it, but I've, I've always thought of being like, or rather doing different types of uploads, like maybe doing just something on a, on a bigger scale with when it comes to gaming, like even integrating like some of the silly sketches that occasionally I've done in the past. Uh, into the videos. Those are super fun, but those take a lot, lot more time than just sitting down and playing a game. But if I did stuff like that, I think I would love to be able to do like, maybe like a four uploads per week, but have them be a little bit more creative. Um, so if, if I were to switch away from the daily uploads, it'd probably be to do something that is slightly, that it's, it's mostly the same, but has just a little bit more of a creative twist that adds a bit more. Um, it's hard to to do that consistently, uh, so like four times a week, and finding something to do that would have that kind of grandiose scale to it, but I think that could be really, really cool. But again, if I ever did start feeling burnout from doing the daily uploads, I'd obviously let the community know and just be like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna tone it down a little bit, maybe go, drop down to give myself an extra day off or maybe two days off and kind of see how it goes from there. Thank you for that question. Next up, uh, let's see. I do not know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to pronounce all these names. There's just, uh, it looks like Dimitri, but it's not. Uh, hi, Jacob. I wanted to ask what made you choose the YouTube career and what would be the ideal job for you if you weren't a YouTuber? Yeah, I think we answered this one earlier, uh, but y you know, the real reason I decided to kind of move towards it is I always had a great appreciation for YouTube, YouTubers, Let's Players. And I just thought it would be really cool to kind of dip my toes into it myself and see how it goes. And it just ended up working out surprisingly well for me. <laughs> and so that's that's been super great. Uh, and again, outside of that, I, I love doing anything creative. 
Again, music would be fantastic, but really anything that's in a creative sphere, that's something that I would enjoy, I'd say. Next up, uh, Mari asks, when and how did you come up with the ending in your videos? Keeps making me happy every time. Oh, I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed my outro. I'm assuming you're talking about the you all are awesome, the whole spiel, um, or maybe it's the, the, the little end screen. I don't think it's the end screen, but uh, I don't know. You know, I, I really don't know. I, I, you can see, you know, I don't even know if that was in my first, like, video. <laughs> oh, crap, I don't even know. I don't even know. I, I have no idea. I, I think I got, obviously, there's, like, a lot of inspiration from, from a bunch of different people. Um, and I just kind of just started doing it. And, like, I don't even know what, like, the head movement thing is anymore. Like, I have no idea why I started doing any of that. But I just do it. I like it. I guess other people like it, too. And it's stuck. It's stuck around from a very early on point. Same thing with the just screaming at the beginning. I don't know why I do that. I've thought about taking that out completely, by the way. <laughs> just because I'll look at my YouTube analytics sometimes, and there's a... There's actually a pretty good spike of people just clicking off within the first five seconds of the video, and I'm pretty convinced it's me screaming. So maybe I'd be a million plus subscribe channel if I didn't scream at the beginning of all my videos. I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, next up, we have uh, Dwight Schrute, just like Dwight Schrute, I'm assuming. Uh, if you could erase any game from your memory and get to play it again for the first time, what would you choose? Easy answer, Bioshock. One of my favorite games. That one is best played, having no knowledge, playing it for the very first time, incredible. Love that game. Next question. Rachel asks, what do you like to do when you're not recording? I like to be outside. I like to get coffee. Uh, I like to be with friends. I like to play music. I've been attempting to learn how to surf. And I'd like to go to the beach some more this summer. Great question. On to the next one. Non-champion asks, this may be the most important question, Chicago style or New York style pizza? Easy answer, New York style all the way. Love thin crust pizza. So good, so much better. Not a big deep dish person, person. I'll eat it, not a big fan. Next. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Azuti, I don't know. Uh, what's your favorite song? Does it have a specific meaning or history to you? Love your content, by the way. You're such a silly goose. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, going back to favorite musicians, Silver Sun Pickups, one of my favorite bands, one of my favorite songs is Lazy Eye by Silver Sun Pickups. Uh, that, that's, I, I remember I started listening to that late high school. It's just a really, every time I listen to it, it's just, it's just a nostalgia trip for me at this point. But it's a great song too. Um, so that's probably one of my favorite songs. Uh, there, there's a lot of songs that I really, really enjoy, but uh, that one's definitely up there. And it's, the first one that comes to mind for me. Next up, Mary asks, what was your dream job growing up? What made you pursue making videos? By the way, I'm obsessed with your channel. It's the only reason I go on YouTube, lol. Thank you, Mary. Uh, answered the second part earlier. What made me, or what was my dream job growing up? I never had one. And I think that's a, a big portion of why I like, I've always kind of had so many, I, I've had a lot of drop, jobs growing up. Um, cause I never had any specific, like one thing that I really had a dream of doing other than being a musician. Um, and that didn't even happen until late in my life. Like growing up, I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going to school and maybe I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, now, now I'm here. So that's cool. Next up, Teal Appeal asks, would you be able to play these two beautiful games? I love watching your playthroughs on long games. Number one is called After Us. Number two, The Spirit of the Samurai. Uh, I, I will definitely look into them. I won't promise that I'll play them, but I will look into them. So thank you for the suggestions. Next up, Via Jones. What's your favorite scary movie? Ooh, The Shining. I really like The Shining. It's a really good classic. Uh, NY asks, hey Jacob, first time fan, when I saw you play At Dead of Night, the observation duty since then, I've looked forward to more vids. Thank you. So out of a ranking, what is your favorite to least favorite horror game? Plus, will you be playing Layers of Fear 3? Uh, do you have a Patreon? I know others would love to support your page. And, oh, <laughs> to pronounce my YouTube name, uh, Night Luna Katza. Thank you, Night Luna. A um, lot of questions there. So let me kind of run through these super quickly. 
First and foremost, uh, will I be playing Layers of Fear 3? I don't know. I, I, I saw that it came out. Maybe? Same thing with the new Amnesia game. Maybe? Just depends on what my order of games are currently. I heard the Amnesia one was really good. I've heard, mi I've heard mixed feelings about the new Layers of Fear, which is a remake of the first and second one, I guess. First game was great. So I, I don't know, we'll, I'll have to consider those and maybe check it out. Um, favorite to least favorite horror game? Gosh, every horror game I've ever played? I don't know. Uh, one of my favorite horror games? Honestly, yeah, Dead of Night was great. Light, I really love Darkwood. It's not a traditional horror game. It's more like a survival, it's a survival top-down horror. I have a video of it on my channel. That was really, really good. There's a lot, there's a lot of really, really great horror games out there. Least favorite, <laughs> Baldi's Basics. <laughs> no, no, sorry, not Baldi's Basics. Um, um, <laughs> shoot, with Jumbo Josh? What is, what is the, <laughs> oh, Garten of Ban Ban. <laughs> They're so bad, but they're so bad. They're, they're they're still fun to play. Like they're fun to to they're fun to just have a bad time with, you know. Um, and uh, your last question: Do I have a Patreon? I know other people would like to support me. Uh, I do not. So uh, technically, I there's channel membership here on YouTube. Um, it's somewhat similar to like Twitch subs, and I guess maybe Patreon. But um, I never want to ask for for like money directly from people. Uh, that's why you never see me promoting it. I don't have a Patreon uh, outside of that. But uh, I've always I've always had the mindset that if I'm gonna be making money off of content creation, I would like to make the money from ads, from sponsorships, not from the people that are getting to enjoy. Uh, I know that you all get this for free. Uh, so it's, I know there's, there there is a, a, a good amount of people that want to give back. And, and I do feel that love whenever I'm doing things like lives with people, like super chats, things like that nature. But it's never something that I, I ever really want to ask from people. So at this moment, no, you're welcome to support me with uh, like channel membership here on YouTube. But even then that's like not a huge thing. Um, but best support is just watching videos. Tell somebody that you know about what's going on here. Thank you for all those questions. Uh, I think there's only a few questions left here. Let's get over to the next one. Hannah asks, what's your favorite food or place to eat? I answered this one earlier. Mix between pizza, Mexican food, Japanese food. Radioactive Penguin asks, what are your top five favorite games that you've played on your channel so far? Ooh. <laughs> uh, ooh. <laughs> At Dead of Night, great, great game. Metroid Dread. Uh, Darkwood was really good. Uh, Spirit Fair was incredible. Honestly, Little to the Left. Little to the Left was super fun. Those are the ones that come to mind. I know there's other ones that are better, potentially. But that's what comes to mind immediately. <laughs> uh, Zap, Zapper says, Jacob, my man, I just don't understand. Why are you so handsome, my man? <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. That's what my mom and dad gave me. Thank you. Next, the Vape Master asks, Happy I found you your, uh, after a while. I was 10 when I found you, and I only watched your Juice Galaxy videos, but I remember too, and now you're my favorite YouTuber, and I'm so happy that you have 100K subscribers. Thank you. Not a question, but I appreciate the comment, so thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, Radioactive Penguin, I think this is another question. What do you do to relax when not making videos? Honestly, just, just chilling, hanging out, like I mentioned, just walking around. I love to go, I love going and get food. I love food. I'm a food guy. I'm a big foodie. I'm just, get, I'm just gonna get up. I'm just, I'm just gonna get out of here right now and get some food. No, I love food. I'm, I love going and get food. That's, that's a big thing. <laughs> or hanging out with friends. Uh, next up, we've got Kitty Eyes. Can you give me your knees, good sir? This is a threat. That's not a question. That's a threat. And I will not take this. My knees are mine. You can't have them. Sorry. And then the final question is not a question. Just someone saying, hi, Jacob. Hello, hello, KA. Thanks for stopping in. Whoo, that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot of questions. Oh boy. Hopefully this video is fun for you all. <laughs> this has been good. <laughs> this has been good. We got our play button. It's so cool to see this in person. I'm glad I finally got a chance to see this. I'm gonna hang this up, hopefully behind me in my recording uh, room. 
even with the lighting getting really dark, me getting all sweaty. You probably hear my AC blasting in the background this whole video. But uh, you know, this, this is the charm of the Jacob Forster channel experience here. Anything goes. Sometimes it's just absolute chaos. <laughs> Sometimes it's a weird, wacky time. Sometimes it's an emotional time. You start crying with some heartbreaking story games, laughing my butt off at some ridiculous games or jumping in my chair at horror games, or I'm taking you along on a little journey, on a little vlog, going to some convention somewhere, or whatever else it might be. So it's always a fun time. I'm always super happy to make these videos for you all, and it's it's so rewarding to, to see what has become of this channel because of all 100,000, 101,000 now at this point, all 101,000 of you uh, being subscribed to this channel. So without further ado, I just want to say thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Love to hear any thoughts and feelings from you all. I think I answered everybody. Uh, I may have missed maybe one or two if you put them in a little bit late, but uh, yeah, other than that, I think I got to pretty much every single question here. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, consider doing so. What are you doing? Hit that bell notification as well. That way you know exactly when I'm uploading any new videos. If you'd like to see any more content from me, you're welcome to follow me on any of my other socials like my Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. I got a Discord channel and a bunch of other cool things always listed in the description down below. But of course, that all being said, you all are awesome. You all are amazing. And I cannot wait to see you all in the next video. Later.